Hi everyone, a warm welcome to all of you to this Facebook live session on the topic Deep Environment. Myself, Dr. Prasita Omnikrishnan, Deputy Director, IGNO Region Center, Kitchen, warmly welcome you to this session on a very important topic, it is called Green Environment. So what is Green Environment? A Green Environment is an environment that natural resources are managed and conserved sustainably and the humans and environment are in balance. In a way, green environment relates to the concern of the environment and helps improve the health of the environment by usage of sustainable means. Hence, green environment in a way means that our resources are managed and conserved sustainably so has to have an healthy environment. What is the importance of green environment? Our planet is going at a rate which is not sustainable in the long run. It is expected that the world population will hit 9.8 billion by 2050 and maybe we need two planets to support our current consumption of resources. Hence, it is important that we need to safeguard our future through more greener and sustainable initiatives. So herein lies the importance of green environment. So what are the characteristics of a green environment? A green environment can ensure a healthy environment for all, ensure various eco-friendly and sustainable practices in our daily life, can provide a framework for developing green practices either through a policy or a SOP in an organization. Come, let us view the objectives of green environment. The main objectives, in fact, of green environment is to provide an eco-friendly and sustainable environment to one and all, to minimize the material use and waste production, to build awareness amongst all for the conservation of environment, to conserve environment using innovative initiatives, eco-friendly inventions, and every organization can also create its own policy called the Green Environment Policy, which needs to be adhered by all its employees. One of the objectives is also to promote green environment through the stakeholders of the organization and or the institution. So come, let us see what are the practices, best practices of having a green environment. First and foremost is there is a need to conduct a green audit. A green audit usually means identifying the usage of energy and water resources to reduce the same. The green audit can also be conducted by the concerned institution to identify the uh, reasons for the wastage of energy and water and the solution for the same can be done to reduce waste rate. Now what are the types and amount of waste also needs to be identified and measures for recycling and minimizing the waste needs to be undertaken. As far as the current scenario is con uh, concerned, the conduct of a green audit in an institution or an organization is pretty much essential or we can say is the first step towards a green environment. Second is the conduct of an energy audit. An energy audit is usually conducted to reduce the carbon footprint. One can use specialized instruments uh, which can uh, analyze the wastage of energy and identify either same and efforts 
can be made to reduce the sale. Further, the energy audit also needs to be conducted regularly for the efficient implementation of clean environment. Next, uh, one of the best practices is having green marketing initiatives. Green marketing is basically developing and selling <coughs> environment-friendly goods and services. Many of the consumers are even ready to pay a higher price for eco-friendly products. And eco-friendly products are the need of the hour as far as green environment is concerned. Next, we have the plastic-free initiatives. We all know that for a sustainable living, it is being emphasized that there should be a reduced usage of plastic in our daily lives. Alternatively, one can use eco-friendly cloth bags. Cloth covers can be encouraged. Further, one can use glass bottles for storing instead of storing in plastic bottles and also use available resources so as to reduce plastic usage in daily life. In fact, if in a house, if we can uh, free the house of plastic, that is one of the greatest initiatives which can be taken at an individual level. Similarly, initiatives for plastic free society can be taken at both organization and community level. So some of the other initiatives which can be taken are landscaping, landscaping of premises where one decides with a greenery, you can landscape your premises with many useful green, uh, green uh, crops or maybe green, uh, green plants, trees, which can enhance the beauty of one's premises. Other than that, you can take some infrastructure initiatives uh, using eco-friendly materials, which can also be taken at both individual, organization, and community level. Water management needs to be done so as to reduce uh, water wastage. Waste management needs to be done efficiently and effectively for a green environment. Apart from this, one can also organize awareness campaigns which can be conducted throughout a, to make people aware about the harmful effects of plastics and hence encourage them to go plastic free and use eco-friendly products in the daily life. Hence, conclusively one can say that a green environment is related to sustainable development as it focuses on how your behavior and life can influence upon the environment positively. In fact, green living benefits us better by a good mental health and thus an overall well-being in life. So, concludingly, I would end with this quote by Mahatma Gandhi which says, the world is enough for everyone's need, but not enough for everyone's greed. Thank you all for listening to me patiently and I hope this presentation would have given you a bird eye view about green environment and hope the environmental sustainable practices can be adopted and used for a green environment. Thank you.